You guys told us to get one, and so we picked one up. Actually, somebody bought this card for us, and we're glad they did, because it's awesome. So this is the AMD Radeon RX 6600, and it is a graphics card that you guys have been telling us to get for a long time. And we should have listened, because it's actually really good. The specific one that we got here is the Asus Dual RX 6600 8GB. Now that actually means that it's one of the lowest models they do, but it's pretty impressive. The card itself is a bit of a chunk. It is two and a half slots wide, and that's because of this really over-engineered cooling system they've put on it. Now I say over-engineered because this card doesn't need a lot at all, but they've managed to fit two great big fans on the front and a cooling system that means that the card barely ever gets warm. The 200 mm dual bearing fans on this are absolutely silent when they're running, and that's even if it's running at all. During all of our testing, these fans kept stopping because they actually have a zero dB mode, which means that the fans don't run unless the card gets to over 52 degrees. Even for a base model, we've found this super impressive. The shroud is made out of plastic, and so is the back too. It's not actually metal, but that doesn't make no difference. It is a budget card, and you're gonna have to make sacrifices somewhere. But it does actually look pretty decent in the system. In terms of specifications, it's not actually that much different from a Radeon RX 5700 XT, but considering that this card, when purchased, was only £225, and the last time we bought an RX 5700 XT, it cost us only £400, that means that these cards are finally getting down to the budget market. Underneath its overly engineered cooling system, it boasts a Navi 23 processor, 1,792 cores, 64 ROPs, a bus with a PCI generation of 4.0, and 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM, which means that this card is plenty for any game owner. Now AMD do advertise this card as a 1080p card, and that's exactly what we tested it for, to see how well it actually performed. And just like the card itself in terms of how it's been manufactured, the size of it, and all the quality that's put into it, the benchmarks have impressed us too. This card has also had the pleasure of being tested in our new testing system. Now we don't exactly have the process we want for that system at the moment and it is currently running an i3-12100F. But as you'll see from the tests, that processor has no problem handling this card. In actual fact, it makes a good pairing for this card, but we'll take a look at those results and then we'll talk about it more.
So as you can see from the benchmarks, this card had no problem at all running the games that we tested. Back to Blood was one of the new games that we added to our collection and it managed to get an average FPS of 169. Now that is absolutely amazing because that game is actually quite demanding on most hardware. Another game that's been added to our testing suite is Death Stranding. Again, it's another game that can be quite demanding, but this card had no trouble running it at 1080p high settings, getting an average FPS of 127. Horizon Zero Dawn actually showed where this card probably could start to fall back, where it only got an average of 84 frames per second, but that is above the target. Target 60 that we normally look for and it had no problem running the game it was super smooth when we were in there. A Plague Tale Innocence is another demanding game but the RX 6600 had no problem getting an average of 129 frames per second. Unfortunately the 1% lows on that game did take a bit of a hit and there was now and again a bit of a random stutter which caused us to get a 0.1% low of 13. It didn't take too much away from the game but you could actually tell it was there so we're not exactly sure what was causing that because the card actually performed quite well but we'll take a look into that a bit more in the future. Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider isn't the most demanding game anymore and it's used in a lot of the benchmarks because it is extremely well optimised but the RX 6600 still managed to pull 114 frames per second on average with excellent 1% lows. Now we'd be lying if we said that this guard couldn't game because clearly it can and it can game extremely well. The scores that we were getting in our testing were very similar to the scores we got using our RX 5700 XT, which actually makes these cards pretty close. But the differences between the cards in particular were down to noise and thermal levels. This card barely ever got warm, and in fact, the fans weren't even on most of the time. It's also a much easier card to install due to it's only got one 8-pin connection for your power, meaning you don't need as big a PSU as well, so you can make a bit of cost saving when building a system with it. The one game we did seem to have some issue with though was Cyberpunk 2077. Now it's not unusual to get issues with that game with pretty much any graphics card and the issues weren't actually within the performance. The RX 6600 easily managed to get 60 frames per second in 1080p high and that's without any kind of assistance from FSR or anything which was super impressive. The problem we had though was we couldn't actually get it to unlock from that frame rate. With V-Sync turned off, Radeon Chill turned off, all of the extra tooling turned off, the game still locked itself at 60 and we barely saw any kind of drop so we actually do believe that this card has a little bit more to give in cyberpunk we just couldn't actually get it to do it now we are super impressed by the amd radeon rx 6600 it means that gamers are going to start to rejoice because cards like this are coming down to the budget level and they are exceptionally good at what they do you guys were right we should have bought one a long time ago and we should have got it on our test bench earlier. and it's so good in fact i've actually started to consider maybe replacing my main systems rtx 3070 ti with this card just purely because of how good it is it's actually got me excited about AMD graphics cards again and I cannot wait until the lower end of the new 7000 series are released and let's hope that they come out with something as good as this. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the AMD Radeon RX 6600. Is it a graphics card that you would consider for your system? Is it within your budget yet? Because they are coming down in price. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you like this kind of content and we'll catch you in the next one.